Nathan, you can lay down a little more, please. Stay one more night. You know? Alright, it's a little noisy because I'm recording in the day. It's not like I can record in the night. By the time I post this up in the morning, I'll be doing all the exam already. So I'm trying to record, edit, and post this up in a little while. For coordinate geometry, you need to ask yourself what is my aim in life? And your aim in life in coordinate geometry is this equation. See this equation here? You see this equation here? That is like the big equation you want to use and adopt in your coordinate geometry flow. So after you memorize that equation, you need two things to use the equation. One, you need a gradient. And you need a point. So you need the gradient and a point. The point is x1, y1 and the gradient is m. And you're plugging those values into the equation to use it. Sorry, I can't make a big tutorial on this, but I can do some questions. And as I do the questions, you'll see if you figure out if you're going to take it to now. This is January 2017. I like this question because it asks everything very simple, right? So we'll start with a simple example and I'll see if I can get a tougher one in. Alright, so P, these are the points of a line segment PQ and we need to determine the gradient of PQ. So gradient formula is M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is a formula you need to memorize. Alright, so change in Y over change in X and you substitute values and you get the answer. Two marks. So the value, here's what I do. I do this. I don't draw a line across the paper like that. Come on, come off. What I do is I write x2, y2 on this, and I write x1, y1 on the point, so I'll know exactly which one to substitute. Yeah, my computer making noise in the background. All right, so y2, 7 minus y1 minus negative 1. Pay attention to them signs, eh, partner? And 2 take away 6, 2 take away 6. You know, I get 2 take away 6, right? x2 minus x1. This is going to give me a beautiful 8 over negative 4, which is a nice little negative 2. Negative 2. Why is this thing not right? Anyway? Negative 2. So that is a gradient day. You get 2 marks. So learning this formula at least will generally get you 2 marks. Even if you don't understand the whole of coordinate geometry, at least learn your gradient formula. Right? Um, the big formula that I showed you at the start of the video is the formula that you'll use to get the meat of the marks in a question like this. Alright, let's go to the next part of this question. The coordinates of the midpoint PQ. To find midpoint, you'll need to use this equation. I'm alright with the highlighter. X, Y, the coordinates of the midpoint, and you'll use this equation. Big brackets, and you add them up. X1 plus X2 over two. Then you put a comma here, because you're not going to add this to anything, right? Y1 plus Y2 over 2. So remember, it's a comma here separating this, eh? because it's a coordinate you're looking for. Look how big I write this thing. I want to space to. I'm going to erase that there. Right. So, X1 plus X2. X1 was 6. Uh, X1 was 6 and X2 was 2. So, it's 6 plus 2 over 2. And Y1 plus Y2. Um, that's negative 1 plus 7, negative 1 plus 7 over 2. So this is going to give, ideally I would have go down here. Yeah, let me go down there. Now. I'll just say it out. 6 plus 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And negative 1 plus 7, that will give me a nice little negative, um, sorry, positive 6 over 2 is 3. So that's the coordinate of the midpoint. And that's how you find the midpoint. So you see how the comma come into play? It's not like you add it and I see students adding up this and then gaining a... No. You do this part separately, this part separately, and you just come all the way down to the answer with some substitution. So that's why we call midpoint. So this is another formula here to memorize. My tip for memorizing formulas right now, I have a few, but since you're on a last minute kind of long stretch here, if you don't know this formula as yet, the best thing to do is write it out, turn the page over, write it again. See if you remember, turn the page over, write it again. See if you remember, keep working and, and, until you can turn the page over and get it without looking back. Um, and then check back on the formula in the next hour. Then check back on it in the next hour. 
then when you reach just before you do the exam tomorrow all the formulas in the entire maths that was giving you a problem you just review them and as soon as you reach in the exam you write them down quickly on your paper as soon as you reach in the exam and you get that pen and you get that paper write down your formulas that you know you might forget rain falling but the maths must go on so the next part is to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector pq all right so to find that you will use the big equation y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 let's see how this equation is used to use this equation we need to know the coordinates of a point on the line and we also need to know the gradient of the line we know the coordinates of a point on the line because if it's a perpendicular bisector it means it passed through this point so the midpoint of pq 4 3 is a point on the line so we can just use so we will just use 3 here that's y1 and 4 here so we're going on with the rest x minus equal y minus so what do we put for m that's the trick what goes for m what comes down and goes for m in this equation perpendicular lines gradients their gradients are related like this let's go back on the page you see how this gradient is negative 2 if a line is perpendicular to that I'll have to put 1 over the negative 2 and then put a sign here a negative sign to switch around the sign so if this is negative it's going to change to positive so the perpendicular gradient is actually equal to a half since we don't have time to check our next question let me show you like if the gradient started off with a third and I want to find the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to this it's going to be negative 3 I'll have to invert this and switch the sign invert and switch the sign we call it the negative inverse some people say or oh, the negative of the multiplicative inverse right um, I hope I'm not hot enough people ahead so one more example if I had a line that had a gradient 2 3 and I want to find the gradient of the of, of the line that is perpendicular to this it's going to be negative 3 and 2 if I want to find the gradient of a line that's 4 let's put 4 over 1 then so the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to that is negative negative 1 over 4 and lastly if I I say one example and I'm doing 3 if I had a line that has a gradient let's say of negative 6 then the perpendicular bisector will have a gradient of 1 over 6 the sign switches and it inverts all right so the gradient was negative 2 so this gradient is going to change to a half because it's perpendicular and you should make note of that somewhere here you should make note of that in the question that m2 is equal to negative 1 over m1 so this is the second gradient and this is the first gradient so the second gradient is equal to negative 1 over negative 2 which is equal to a half so this is nice and you, you, you would have gotten your mark for that now all that's left for me to do is simplify this and to simplify that I will have y minus 3 is equal to a half x and a half goes by the 4 as well so it will be um, negative 2 and then I bring across the 3 to meet his friend so it's going to be a half x when I bring across this 3 it's going to change to positive right so it's going to be negative 2 plus 3 so you know that's going to simplify to y is equal to a half x plus 1 half x and then already x a half x plus 1 so I didn't get time to break it down, break it down. This may help people who have an idea of it a little more than those who try to learn it from scratch. So let me see if I can edit this, upload this and do a next video because I try to do one on speed time too. So look out for that.